Hi, I'm Joe Zicky, inventor of the revolution, and one of our club members asked about applying silicone spray to his line set to help with binding. I've got two comments on this. Number one, I don't suggest applying anything to your line sets. First of all, if it's slippery, it probably won't stick to your lines, and if it does stick, other things are probably going to stick to it, like sand. And that's about the worst thing that could happen to your line sets. Secondly, I don't think the actual problem is binding, it's actually spin management. So let's talk about spin and management and wear and tear. We have four lines, so we will have wear and tear. Two conditions in particular I want you to be careful about is high wind conditions, like over 12, 14 miles an hour. There's going to be a lot of tension on those lines, and that adds friction. The other condition is wet, sandy conditions. If your lines get wet and then sandy, that is extremely abrasive and is not good for your line sets. Here are some other conditions that cause friction. An old line set has more friction than a new line set. A high number of spins will cause a lot of friction. Shorter line sets cause more friction. The shorter line sets increase the angle of the lines, and this causes more friction at the twist. Spins cause much less friction than flying. When flying and turning your kite, your lines need to slide past this twist, and that's what causes all the friction. Spinning your rev is not the problem. Flying your rev with those spins is where the binding happens. I often recover from more than 20 spins. spin technique that I'm using. This just keeps the altitude so I can continue the spin. With each spin that I get out, it becomes easier and easier to control the revolution. That was 20 spins. Did you notice? All I did was spin to remove those twists. I didn't fly around the sky at all. The key point to take here is that your goal should be to reduce those spins not to fly around. That was 20 spins and these aren't even new lines. When we fly to the right and to the left we really have no twist because our handles follow the direction of the rev. But when we fly down we have a half a twist because our handles are still pointed up. If we continue the turn we have a full twist and now when I'm flying I can feel the friction. But I'm still in pretty good control. Let's do another twist. Now with two twists, I'm starting to feel it, but I'm still in control. Third twist. Okay, now I'm starting to feel the friction. At this point, when I have twists in my lines, I'm really thinking to myself, I gotta get rid of those twists. Combining twists with pattern flying is one of the fastest way to wear your lines. So the rule of thumb is number one, get rid of twists. Number two, if you have twists, limit your pattern flying. Okay, let's continue with those three twists and find the bind point. Four, five, six. Yeah, it's close to a bind. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it's bound. Ten twists. There are a lot of variables that will affect when your lines will bind. For example, I'm flying on 60 foot lines in three to five mile an hour winds and I'm binding up around 10 twists. But if you were flying on the beach in 20 mile an hour winds and your lines were wet and sandy, you might bind up in two twists. At this point, we have two options. We can fly back up into the sky, spin as fast as we can, hopefully in the right direction, reduce the friction till we can fly it, or two, we can just pair our handles together as one and spin them out like this. Both handles are clear and both line sets are completely clear. A common mistake is to pass one handle over the other. 
This will take the twist out between the two handles. But you'll end up with twists on each handle. Now the fly out of the spin technique. I like this technique because it's fast and it's fun. The only problem is lots of times I choose the wrong direction. Yeah, that's the wrong direction. Clockwise. Pump it to maintain altitude. Yes. All right, so let's look at a couple examples of using spins in a pattern. This is one of my favorite patterns, is an inverted slide with 360 snap spins. The key here is to keep your spin count low, and when you get up to the higher numbers, like let's go three spins, don't spend a lot of time flying the pattern at that spin count. Here's what it looks like. This fly to the right. 360 spin to an inversion, slide, add another spin, slide. Now I got a lot of spin count, so I'm gonna take it back out. Slide back, snap spin the opposite direction, slide continue, and snap spin out of it. Now our lines are clear. All right, here's a trick the pros use. So for example, we're gonna go over to the side and we're gonna do a clockwise spin leading to our inverted slide. And then we're gonna do another clockwise spin. So what we want to do is we can start before we get there with a counterclockwise spin. And then when we go into our clockwise spins, we'll be actually reducing our spin count. So let's go to a dive stop and put in a counterclockwise spin to set us up. It looks like this. Dive stop, counterclockwise, fly out, clockwise to the inversion. Now I have a half a twist. Another clockwise spin. Now I have a half a twist the other way. Now I slide back out, snap, and out to the end, snap. The trick here is if you can plan out your pattern, you can use those clockwise and counterclockwise turns to set up a pattern to keep your spin count low. All right, let's do one more example. Remember our bicycle spins? Let's practice that. And remember, we're trying to keep our spin count low. There's some pulling action involved in that bicycle spin. So let's go for three spins. And remember, we want to balance our practice on both sides. So we'll do three spins in and three spins out. This is what it looks like. One, two, three, pause. One, two, three. Basically, we're doing spins and we weren't really flying any patterns, so that's another key to that move. So the final word is spin to your heart's content. Just don't do a lot of flying around the sky with twists in your lines. Check out the Rev Masters at Club 38 and see if you can identify their spin strategy. Hit the like button, leave a comment, check us out at revkites.com. We'll see you on the field.